ile ni beun ni le loko esiku dede asiko yi hey guys it's aderonke again today i'd like to introduce you to three paintings um these three paintings you could very well liken to the mona lisa i feel like many yoruba people and nigerians and africans in general we know very much about european art i guess because they are more famous when you google paintings for example you tend to see european art first kind of thing when you ask the Af average educated nigerian or african about like picasso or vincent van gogh or people like um leonardo da vinci and you know these are people that we know but when you ask them about and and their and their works too the average person has heard about mona lisa and the starry nights and paintings like the last supper and american gothic and you know things like that so i guess we we need to do better the purpose of this video is not to point fingers <laughs> it's just to say we we need to do better i myself I'm guilty of not, you know, trying to find out more about African artists than, you know, letting myself be obsessed about it as I tend to be about other kinds of art. So now I'm paying more attention to African art and sculptures and good God, <laughs> good God, <laughs> we have a lot of beautiful stuff as a people um and i'm really really proud of our artists there are a lot of african artists that are not celebrated enough you know i, I, I people can if you say if you tell the average african name one african piece of art you know if they see one they might be able to recognize that it's african obviously but they may not know the name or know who the painter is or even care People like I know Nobolu, Bene Wangu, Eha Boy Mokpae, Bruce Onobakpea, Lamidi Fakeye, Akion Lala Shekan, Jimo Braimo, Twin 77, Yusuf Grillo, Nike Davis, Okundaye. Some of these people are still very much alive, but they're not celebrated enough. Like, you just hear that someone has passed away and it's like, oh, it was an artist. Okay, cool. You know, people don't. I maybe in the in the art community anyway. So I guess the point of this epistle, ladies and gentlemen, is let's be more appreciative of our, our works of art. I wish I, I I don't know. I guess when I was younger. Oh, long story. Okay, I'll make it quick. When I was younger, and I'm I'm really mad about this. I'm not like mad mad, but I'm a bit mad my art my fine arts teacher usually made it seem like i i don't know maybe the man was angry about life or maybe angry about not being promoted or maybe what I, i'm not going to say much but it made fine arts class hell because it was always very like moody and very like he, he never really said anything to appreciate you or to encourage you to you know be more optimistic about art it would just it wasn't the best art teacher at all at all should have taught like mathematics or something i guess if i was encouraged more i would have been more like more good with paintings and drawings and now i'm trying to get into it and i don't even know where to start so there are three paintings that have over the years been addressed as the the three african mona lisas all three paintings are of the same person and they you know each painting is quite interesting so the artists of these three paintings i will talk about next so the name of the artist is odinigwe benedict chukwa dibia Enwonwu, and we call him ben Enwonwu for short it's an Igbo name. The uh, artist was Igbo. 
he has passed away now but i'm just going to give you a bit introduction into who the artist of the three mona lisa's is before showing you each of the now why why am I, why do i keep saying mona lisa i i'm going to say mona lisa because you know those three paintings are just as interesting just as unique just as revolutionary maybe not as famous you know even amongst africans maybe not as famous but just as interesting so don't get offended or why why are you saying mona lisa why don't you just call them their names you know so i apologize Odinigwe Benedict Chukwu Adibia Enwonwu was born on the 14th of July 1917 and he passed away uh, on February 5, 1994. You know, better known as Ben Enwonwu, he was a Nigerian painter and sculptor. He was arguably the most influential African artist of the 20th century. His pioneering career opened the way for the post colonial proliferation and increased visibility of modern African art. He was one of the first African artists to win critical acclaim, having exhibited in August exhibition spaces in Europe and the United States and listed in international directories of contemporary art. Since 1950, Nguyen was celebrated as, as Africa's greatest artist by the international media and his fame was used to enlist support for black nationalist movements all over the world. The Nguyen crater on the planet Mercury is named in his honor so i basically took this word for word from wikipedia if you'd like to see the rest about his childhood and everything you can do so so the three paintings are called the three tutus the three tutus some would say uh portraits of tutu but i call them the three tutus because each painting is of the same person but um it's, 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 each painting is different from the first you know you observe it differently so all three paintings were painted in 1973 and 1974 and all three of them were missing for a long time so there are several articles that I've that I've read as soon as you google tutu painting or tutu painting by Ben Wong or tutu Ademi Louis who was the muse for these paintings and was a princess and she from what I've read because I wasn't around at that time obviously <laughs> from what I've read they, it was not common for princesses to just pose for workers let alone pose for long hours for art you know if anyone was going to make a sculpture of the princess or anybody in the royal family they it would be quite abstract they wouldn't the members of the royal family would not necessarily pose for them you know as at that time for long hours so she did and other interesting things to mention would include the fact that the way he painted her was quite different you, you know as at that time it was it he made her look a bit older because that, that those who knew tutu at that time said there was no way she could especially the third painting of her there was no way she could have looked that old you know and the tutu herself madame tutu ade tutu ade milui i some people say that she's in london or she's there's a mystery around her and around the three paintings of her so the first tutu, I think Ben Ewan was robbed at the time that he was sick. I think he was sick before he passed away. You know, not the, I don't believe that uh, people die and that becomes the end of them. I strongly believe <laughs> that people just sort of lose their body. The body becomes something that they cannot, their soul cannot attach to anymore. So they detach from the body forever. There's literally no turning back on that, except they, in the spirit realm, still decide to use that body to pass messages on, maybe their dreams or just use that, you know, 
body, I guess, so that people can recognize them when they're passing messages to them. But I don't believe that once people die, that's the end of them. I don't, I don't believe so. So in whatever form that Ben Enwan Wu is now, salute, at that time, before he passed away, he was sick. And the first, I think the very first original painting was stolen from him. So from not finding a painting to finding one maybe somewhere in a basement somewhere in london to finding another one i encourage you to do your research you know about the paintings and if you wish about the model herself uh it's it's literally, literally everything about this that's why I, I like likened it to mona lisa i did that for two reasons one um just so that it can you know gather attention and so that people would at least pay attention because if i say tutu many who don't know tutu but several people know mona lisa so just to spark interest and two because of the mystery you know some people say that uh, the mona lisa is not was actually the painter's lover <laughs> it's a it looks like the painting of a lady but it could very well be the painting of the painter's male lover sort of disguised in a lady's body so <laughs> that's interesting too uh, that's not the case for tutu for tutu for tutu we know very well that ade tutu ade milui was in fact the model but our parents was was modified so that she would have looked more regal so that she still looks regal at this time uh so let's go into the paintings the first painting of tutu looks like this and this is the original one and ben and one who painted this in 1973 so they are <laughs> i've read a lot of analysis of this and it looks you know quite deep you know what her face is actually saying is she up for you know for what the future holds for the african the rise of of africa and african africans in general um uh, post colonialism and you know what is to come everything about this is 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 interesting is, is there fear in her eyes is she is she afraid what are eyes really saying <laughs> so when you stare you you almost become obsessed with it with the way that she's positioned you can see her face <laughs> you can see most of her face to her eyes to how she's dressed uh by the way the head tie that she has on her head is called gilly gilly uh the blouse that blouse we call booba Buba. the um fabric that is on her left shoulder is called the iboru it's called the iboru you could also call it the ikbele it could also be an ikbele then I, I assume that she would have had like a wrapper tied and it's called the iro when i make a video on the traditional uh clothing i would uh readdress the each piece of clothing so there's it's amazing it's amazing i don't want to like go too far and say oh this is probably what she's th that's the beauty of it you know so to me there's a bit of hope but then you can't tell it's, it's almost like there's a bit of fear too it's almost like this is new maybe not necessarily this is new and well I guess Tutu at that time would have felt, well, this is new. Nobody has ever painted me before. I've never had to sit this long for a painter before. I I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's mysterious and it's beautiful. I guess Ben, at that time, Ben, everyone who visited the, the palace of the king of Ife, and I guess, and he saw Tutu. He saw Tutu in the palace and the rest was history. The family was a bit reluctant but yeah it did paint her and beautifully too and there are lots of messages in this that i i guess i would never be able to fully comprehend except like i don't know 
<laughs> ben appears to me <laughs> in my dream and sort of explains to me what he was thinking. Uh, but that's that. And then the second tutu, uh, without further ado, if you look at it closely too, it's um, it's amazing <laughs> what her eyes are saying this time. I guess she she's not. It's, it's almost like the first tutu is looking a bit higher. Is looking forward a bit higher and then to me I think the the gaze got lowered a bit I don't know and I, I I don't know why I don't know it's almost like the the first painting is is that of a uh, someone who's new to something um, okay I'm not going to analyze this and ruin it for everybody but this is just what I think definitely the gaze of the second tutu is a bit lower than the than the first. It's, it's like she's thinking this time. In the first one, it's not that she's not thinking, but she's I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The the gaze is different this time. The the f expression is different. So this is the second tutu. And the third tutu is these tutu. And this this is the one who this one uh i should mention that uh, i think the only tutu that is missing now is the or is the original tutu the oldest one the first one that i showed you that was painted in 1973 this ones that were painted in 1974 i think they've been found i'm not too sure i know this third one has been sold to an anonymous buyer for like a lot of money this one has been sold for a lot of money a lot of money um as at that time and even till now when you still a lot so i'll let you figure out how much it was sold for <laughs> i'm not going to tell you everything just so that you can google it and do more research but this tutu i think is the most regal of all i guess that that gaze is back that looking farther gaze is back or just that less critical phase i don't know the the first tutu is it has a novice like quality to it well the woman had a novice like expression to her you know this is new type of thing and then the second tutu is oh wait what's going on it's maybe thinking think, maybe not necessarily oh wait what's is it's not that it's more like i'm thinking um my guess my guess is lowering and i'm i'm considering something i'm pondering over something this third tutu in my opinion is the most confident of all you know the most regal of all i'm not going to say the most beautiful of all because she's the you know this she's the all three are beautiful but there's something about her she's just like i don't know she's she's a boss you know <laughs> I don't know I just love her look at the the head tie I am thinking there's something with the the front of the head tie as well there's it's a bit um it's a bit puffier it's a bit puffier uh, the face is a bit more mature again the first one was painted in 1973 the third in 19 the second and third in 1974 Tutu would not have grown in leaps and bounds and looked and so different within the space of a year or less than a year. But uh, again, Ben kept painting her to be a bit older than she was, and um, maybe a bit, maybe by the by the time he was painting her the third time, she had become more confident too more trusting of him and the process of of painting her and uh, <laughs> it's mesmerizing <laughs> it's, no it's just i don't know i don't know each one each to do each to do is just you you try to figure out what was he thinking when he was creating her when he was creating this this painting that i would like to address as her because Again, it's a painting of someone, but it's, it's almost like the the piece of heart has a presence of its own. 
So, and the third teacher is like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the third teacher is like, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> kind of, I, I'm not going to assume. I'm not going to assume because I don't. Again, I don't know. I, my, my psychic mediumship ability is pretty much non-existent, or maybe just in my mind. <laughs> so maybe if I could like try to see if I could find more more info about these three paintings <laughs> I, I could but I, I I don't know I don't know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I of all these three paintings I think the third tutu is like the most um all three tutus are but the the third tutu has sort of reached a level of satisfaction that you can see in the in the puffiness of her head tie and the be the richness of the painting in general and maybe the third tutu her face is protruding less than the second i don't know it's almost like you know, our face is not protruding maybe in fear or in anticipation or in expectation or in it's almost like yes, I'm I'm I've realized my power, my I've sort of come to a realization of who I again this is not necessarily about the model or self, you know. This being the African Mona Lisa, this three paintings being the African Mona Lisa's uh sort of speaks to the 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 black rising and what the the artist himself was open for uh for, in the for the future so th that is that <laughs> tell me what you think in the comment section let me know about the about what you think do you do you i do you notice a form of difference between the first and the and the, amongst them amongst the three do you what do you think the artist was thinking do you have more maybe if you read something that i haven't mentioned and you want to tell me you can definitely leave it in the comment section below did you know about this painting before now do you know about african artists do you pay attention to african art do you go to art galleries do you tell me anything random about art <laughs> i'm always interested uh thank you so so much for watching please like share and subscribe if you'd like to and continue to support my channel in the ways that you have thank you so so much for your support and i'll see you in the next video have a good day and goodbye